Well, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, joining you this morning from Grand Junction, Colorado. Uh, actually, I'm in the business center of the uh, hotel here, and uh, this is not where I plan to uh, share with you this morning, but uh, things have happened on our road trip. Uh, we were planning to be with you in person today, but we got a bit sidetracked on our way home from our trip to Michigan. Uh, as many of you know, we went to uh, Michigan to go visit uh, our son Timothy and his wife Grace and our granddaughters, uh, Ellie and Ivy. And uh, on the way, it was great. You know, we left last week and uh, had a nice drive. Uh, got to see a lot of um, beautiful scenery, mesas and mountains and fields and uh, rivers and lakes. Just a, a lot of that open field and open uh, country that we don't see in Southern California very often. Uh, it was very nice. It was uh, good weather and no traffic and just a, a great uh, reminder of God's creative power as uh, we were looking at just all of this uh, uh, open land and all the, the trees and rivers and mountains and uh, just a really good time driving out. Uh, when we got to Michigan, it was great. Uh, we had a good time visiting with family and friends. We got to see uh, not only Timothy and Grace and the girls, but we got to see the Bargas family, uh, Richard and Wendy and their daughters. And uh, that was a good time. We got to visit the uh, office, uh, IFCA office in Granville and uh, spend some time there talking with Rich about ministry and just what's going on, uh, some plans for the IFCA uh, that he has in the uh, months and um, in the upcoming year. So some really encouraging things going on there. And I can share some of that with you if you're interested at a later time. But it's just a good trip overall. Uh, one of the main reasons we went out uh, was to go visit uh, Ellie for her second birthday. Uh, last week she turned two and we really uh, had a great time uh, watching her enjoy uh, all of the celebrating uh, because of her birthday. Uh, she enjoyed her party and her presents and her dessert. Uh, Grace made a special dessert for her, a strawberry shortcake, and uh, it was really good. And uh, Ellie loves strawberries, and so when she saw that, she just really lit up. And so uh, it was a great time. Uh, we were able to go to a church uh, with Tim and Grace and uh, just join them from that service. And uh, interestingly enough, their pastor uh, of their, their home church there uh, was preaching out of uh, First Peter, and I say that's interesting because the next series that I'm going to begin for the Sunday school time uh, is the book of First Peter. And so it was encouraging for me to sit there and uh, listen uh, to a message uh, from a book that I'm going to be preaching very soon. And so I look forward to that. And just we had a great time there uh, fellowshipping with other brothers and sisters in Christ uh, there in uh, Michigan last Sunday morning. And um, all in all, it was a really great trip. Uh, and that is until we started to come home. Uh, the trip was very smooth, as I said, on the way out, and the visit was great. Um, as we came home, same thing. You know, we were excited uh, to be coming back and looking forward to our road trip home. And again, the weather was good and the traffic was fine. Um, we made a few fun stops along the way, just uh, found some interesting rest stops and uh, went and spent a little time there as a family and just enjoying that. Uh, and then as we were driving, I don't remember which day it was, I believe we left on a Monday, I don't know if it was Tuesday, uh, when we got the message, I believe it was, and uh, Timothy had sent a text, and uh, he kind of started out the text by saying, uh, don't worry, everything's okay, and uh, when you hear that, you know bad news is coming. And so what had happened is uh, Ellie was sitting at the uh, kitchen table, and uh, she likes to kind of push off with her feet, and so she was on her chair, she pushed back, and uh, she tipped the chair over and fell back and uh, she hit her head. And so Timothy uh, told us that he had taken her to the um, emergency room and uh, the doctors had uh, uh, examined her. He took her because you know she was uh, acting a little strange at home after the fall. And uh, after some tests, they had determined that she had a mild concussion. And uh, if you've ever experienced that yourself or with your children or anyone you know, uh, concussion can be very scary, uh, especially though with a, a little child. And so obviously we were very concerned and uh, we were feeling uh, really bad for Tim and Grace uh, as the parents just having to deal with that. Of course, we were concerned for Ellie and uh, her situation, her health. And so just right there in the car, we, uh, we were praying and asking the Lord to bring comfort and healing. And, you know, really it's all you can do at a time like that. You just have to place... Uh, your trust completely in Him. 
uh, because you know you're far away and and you're not there and and even if we were um, there isn't much that we can do we just have to rely on the lord uh, to begin and complete that healing process and uh, just bring her back to her her normal self and so uh, we continued on uh, through our journey or or on our journey and uh, so that took us from michigan uh, through indiana and illinois uh, through iowa through nebraska all of that was great Uh, and then we hit colorado and uh, it might be better to say that colorado hit us Uh, our stay for wednesday evening and that's the day when all of this kind of happened and i'll explain what all of this is in just a bit uh, we were supposed to stay in uh, Grand Junction for the evening and then come back home uh, early Thursday, but we never made it. Um, another disappointment stopped us dead in our tracks. And so about, about 10 miles outside of Grand Junction, uh, I noticed that the truck started to seem a little sluggish. Uh, it didn't have the acceleration or the power that it did, and so I didn't know if it was because we were on a bit of a grade, um, not really sure what was happening. And right about that same time, Monique heard a very interesting noise, uh, odd noise. She said it sounded kind of like um, something metal was being dragged underneath, like maybe a a can or something. And so it wasn't the best place for us to stop at the moment. A lot of traffic on Interstate 70 uh, didn't have a shoulder to pull over on that was safe. And so uh, as soon as we found that, which was just a, a few minutes later, maybe, I don't know if it was a mile or two, but it wasn't more than uh, five minutes. Uh, We pulled over and uh, popped the hood and I got out and started to check everything. And so I was looking to see if there was anything uh, out of the ordinary inside the engine compartment. And uh, there was no smoke, which was a good sign. Uh, No burning smells, also a good sign. I checked to see if there were any fluids leaking, any hoses that broke, nothing. I mean, everything was very clean inside. Uh, It just died. And so I tried turning the truck on again and it wouldn't start, it wouldn't turn over. And uh, I figured that uh, what had happened was maybe our alternator died and then the battery died out. Um, If you know anything about alternators, it powers your battery uh, and your vehicle while it's running and it recharges your battery as you're driving. Uh, And if the alternator goes out, you can drive for a while with the battery power, but then once the battery dies, all the electrical, every, all the systems will die. So I thought that's what happened. The alternator went bad, battery died. Um, it would be a pretty basic fix if that was the case, you know, something that could be done in a few hours if the mechanic had time. Uh, and so I was hoping that would be it. So we called AAA and I got towed into town and I made a few calls uh, to see, you know, what could be done. And uh, what we were thinking was gonna be the best case situation uh, turned out to be quite different. Uh, It was already too late for us to go to any mechanics, and so we just got to our hotel. And praise God that the hotel was right across the street uh, from a mechanic, and so we we just parked the car there, had the tow truck driver drop us off, and then we went into the hotel and, you know, settled in for the night and and just prayed and, uh, you know, waiting to see what the the next day was going to hold for us. And... um, So long story short, uh, we found out from a local mechanic that uh, the engine was dead. Um, It it wasn't going to start. It couldn't be repaired there on the spot. Um, If it could be repaired, they'd have to open up the engine and see uh, what was going on, but he couldn't do that at the moment. And so uh, it really was a bit of a mystery to everyone uh, because, again, the oil was fine. The the fluids were all there. No belts or hoses broken. Uh, It just seized up. And so I got on the phone with my mechanic at home and he got on the phone uh, with the local mechanic out here and uh, they they were having some conversation about what the issue could be. Uh, They ran some tests or, you know, the the mechanic here ran some tests and and, uh, my mechanic, Tony, was telling him, well, try this, try that. And and, uh, they were both very gracious and very helpful. And uh, after running some tests and removing some parts, they both determined that uh, what was being seen and what had happened and the noise that the engine was making when they finally got it started, uh, that the engine was, it was broken. Uh, Basically what the mechanic out here said was, uh, you didn't do anything wrong. It it was not because of an oil leak. All I can tell you is that something broke inside and uh, it happens. And sometimes a part comes loose and then it just gets in the engine and, and ruins things. And so he said, that's looks like what happened here that we won't know for sure until we open up the engine and we just can't do that today. 
And so what I thought was going to be a quick fix turned out to be a very um, expensive repair. And uh, it's not something that's going to be taken care of in a short amount of time. Uh, and that's why we're still here in Grand Junction. Uh, you know, after three days of uh, calls and visits and, and brainstorming, uh, we're finally ready to, to go back home. Uh, it's uh, Saturday morning right now uh, as I'm recording this. And I actually recorded uh, the message last night. And then as I was trying to process it, something went wrong and the, the video and the audio got all messed up and half the recording dropped. And that was about two in the morning. And I just said, oh, that's it, I'm going to go to sleep and get up early and, and try again. Uh, and so, you know, this morning we're getting ready to go out. I'm going to go pick up the rental car in just a little bit and then we'll be on our way. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be back home sometime tomorrow and um, try to get everything taken care of then. But we're going home, the truck is staying here. And so uh, we've determined that it's, um, it makes more sense to leave the truck here and have it repaired than pay the uh, very, um, I don't know, it's just a, a, a big expense to tow it home. And so we figured we would put that money into the repairs rather than spending money to transport it home and then uh, have to fix it anyhow. Uh, so I'm going to have to come back here uh, in a couple of weeks when the truck is done. Uh, basically, they're going to put a brand new engine inside the truck, and it's going to be uh, about a week for the uh, parts to come in and another four or five days for the repairs to be done. And so I'll just have to fly back out and pick it up uh, sometime in mid-August. Um, definitely not planned. Definitely not in our budget and not according to our schedule. Uh, there's so many problems we had to... Uh, kind of evaluate and questions that we tried to answer and issues that we tried to address. Um, and that impacted our trip, obviously, for a few days. But not just us, it also has an impact on you. Uh, the fact that I'm not there this morning and I'm not able to preach, uh, which is important because Pastor Scott and his family, they're out of town. And so I was supposed to be there to fill in for him and, uh, uh, you know, everything we thought was going to go smoothly, but that's not what happened. Uh, so in, uh, as you're watching this, if you're watching this in the morning, you're not uh, there uh, in person. Uh, we actually have a guest speaker today, uh, Jesse Randolph. And uh, praise God that he was willing to uh, step in and he was available. Uh, if that name is familiar to you, it's because he has been out before uh, and, and ministered to us at CBC. And so I know that uh, tonight's message, uh, if you watch it this evening, uh, will be a very encouraging, uh, powerful message from God's Word. And so I look forward to watching that uh, as soon as I have an opportunity. Uh, there won't be any in-person children's ministry. We started that last week. We were looking forward to doing that again today or um, Sunday. And uh, that's not going to happen because Monique is with me and she was scheduled to teach and Heidi is on vacation with her family. And so that's going to have to be a recording as well. And so we encourage you, if you have any children, uh, have them watch that. I know that Monique prepared a good message for them. Uh, that also meant extra task for people back uh, at home. Uh, Selena really had her work cut out for her this week. Uh, she's uh, always a great help to us uh, in there in the office and always willing to, to do uh, everything um, that uh, are a part of her responsibilities and more. And so we thank the Lord for her. But uh, she really had her hands full as she was taking care of not only her regular uh, weekly duties, but uh, those that uh, Scott and I both needed her to step up and uh, handle. Um, this morning, Bob Huber stepping in uh, just at a short notice uh, to go ahead and open up our service and do the reading and the prayer and, and all of that. Uh, and so we're thankful for him. And Wednesday evening, uh, I was supposed to lead our uh, midweek study. And as soon as we broke down, I knew that wasn't going to be able to, to happen because I was out, um, we would say, in the middle of nowhere. I'm sure those who live in Grand Junction uh, wouldn't say that, but uh, we, we weren't going to be in a situation where I could lead. And so I just sent out a message and, you know, hey, brothers, uh, could, can one of you lead tonight's meeting? And uh, uh, it seemed like within a, a minute or two, uh, Steve Esmond just said, I'll, I can do it. And so I, I praise the Lord that we've had so many people just kind of step up and uh, help in this situation. Praise God that things have been taken care of. Uh, you know, and during all of this, I guess it's been about four days now, uh, I, I kept coming back to two passages of Scripture that I was just thinking about and praying over and through and uh, considering it in light of our, our current situation. And those two passages are uh, James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, 
and Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 10 through 20. Uh, and so that's what I want to share with you today with the rest of the time that we have. It is going to be a little bit of a shorter uh, message this morning. It's not the original lesson I was going to prepare. Uh, I'll go ahead and prepare that for next week. But I just wanted to share with you this morning some very important reminders and some lessons uh, that I have learned uh, in all of this about joy and trials and provision through the body of Christ. Uh, they have been great lessons for me, very timely reminders. And uh, I can honestly say that I have been very blessed in all of this. And so I hope that what uh, the Lord shares uh, with us uh, through his word this morning blesses you uh, as much as it's blessed me. Uh, and so uh, let me go ahead and just open up in a word of prayer and then we'll get right into uh, a little bit uh, of what I've learned again from James chapter one, verses two through four. Father, we do come before you. We thank you so much for this opportunity to meet, uh, even if it's through a recording. We uh, thank you that you are so good and merciful and gracious to us. And I pray that uh, as I share this morning, that you will just teach us, you will encourage us, uh, that we will be edified and that we will continue to grow uh, in our love for and our walk in Christ. We thank you and we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. So I don't have uh, any slides or anything for you this morning. I apologize for that. I didn't have time to prepare any of that. Uh, if you would like uh, some kind of outline or some notes, uh, send me an email, let me know, and I can send some things out later this week uh, once I get back into the office. Uh, James chapter 1, if you'd open your Bibles and follow along, beginning in verse 2, it says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Um, James here, just a little background, he's speaking to his brethren uh, who have been scattered outside the land of Palestine. Uh, this is not um, just the, the Jewish people in general uh, who have been scattered because of the, the various uh, invasions throughout history, uh, the Assyrian or the Babylonian invasions or... Uh, you know, with the um, whole intertestamental period and and uh, the Seleucids and Ptolemies and, and Rome. It wasn't just the general uh, dispersion uh, of Jews, but what this uh, is that uh, James was speaking of uh, is primarily written to his brethren, uh, Jewish believers who were spread uh, throughout the land because of persecution. And so he's speaking to Christians. Uh, he is writing to them, and as he begins his letter, uh, to them, he begins his letter with a word of encouragement. Uh, and if you're wondering what that sound is, I think the air conditioner just turned on, so I apologize if it's a little distracting right now. Uh, but the cool air feels nice. Uh, so James, as I said, was uh, writing this message to his brethren who were experiencing persecution, experiencing trials, and they were scattered. And, and so as he writes to them, he, he tells them to face their situations uh, with joy, to evaluate their current condition and to see it as something that is joyful. Uh, that's very unnatural for us to, to consider as humans. We don't see joy in trials. We don't maintain that joy. Uh, we want to complain. We, we become anxious. We begin to unravel. We question why we're suffering. Um, and that's because you know the, the unregenerate person, the unregenerate mind, cannot see beyond the temporal experience. Uh, unsaved people cannot comprehend that trials could actually be a good thing. Uh, and James uh, will tell us here in just a few minutes that that's exactly what they are, that there's benefit in trials and that God has a purpose for them. And so he speaks of these trials. He says there's various trials. Uh, they come in many shapes and sizes. Again, here I believe he's speaking about those trials that are directly connected to being a Christian. We would call it persecution for their faith. Um, that direct persecution for following Christ. And uh, we know that these trials, they interrupt the, the, the peaceful flow of our lives that we desire. Uh, various trials in life that we could encounter are sometimes because of our faith as Christians. Uh, sometimes they're just general difficulties in life that destroy the peace in our lives. Uh, I, I think of it kind of like um, a stone that is thrown into a calm body of water. Uh, you take that stone and you, you look at that water and you toss it in. And as you do that, it hits the surface and disrupts everything on the surface and what's underneath the surface. It splashes and then you see that ripple effect just moving out from that place of impact. Uh, and that's kind of like what trials are. Uh, trials hit our peaceful uh, situations and it just, it, it disrupts everything. And there are often ripple effects 
uh, the impact of those trials can often be felt uh, beyond just our situation. Uh, and that's what life is like. I mean, for us this week, we didn't experience um, persecution because of being a Christian, but uh, we did experience some trials. You know, to know that Ellie had suffered that concussion was very trying for us. Uh, we love her and we want to make sure that she's healthy. Uh, our truck's engine dying about 700 miles away from home uh, in the middle of nowhere, that seriously interrupted our peaceful and joyful week. Uh, but in all of this, you know, the Lord has his plan. And that's what I was reminded of over and over again these past uh, few days, is that he has a plan in this situation. And not just this one, but in all of our situations of trials. And uh, you know, just in short, his plan is to refine us. It's to strengthen us. It's to cause us to become stronger in our devotion to and reliance upon him. And these past few days, I've been thinking of these passages over and over and over again, wondering what God's greater plan is in all of this, praying and asking God to teach me and strengthen me and, and cause me to grow. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I don't like stones thrown into my peaceful life. I like consistency. I like a life free of troubles. Uh, I'm sure we all do, but that's not the world we live in. Uh, because of sin, uh, this world has fallen and our lives are full of trials. Uh, because of our faith in Christ, sometimes we experience opposition and persecution. And uh, right now we're experiencing various trials or difficulties in life. Uh, our family has these trials of of Ellie's concussion and the truck breaking down and uh, we in general not just our congregation but our nation uh, we are suffering those trials of coronavirus and uh, the disruption of worship services and political and social and economic turmoil I mean and that's been going on for for months and months and uh, it seems like there's no end in sight you know and, and people might ask well why is God not stopping these things uh, is it because he's incapable well, no of course not is it because he's unaware of what's going on? Absolutely not. Is it because he's indifferent? No, not at all. Uh, he's very concerned with what happens to his creation and especially his people. So why is he allowing these things to continue, these various trials? Why isn't he stopping them, stopping the disruptions in our lives? And the answer in James is this, that because he has a greater plan. James tells us in so many words that these trials have a divine purpose, that our faith, when it's tested, by trials, we experience growth uh, in our spiritual lives. We, we grow in endurance, we grow in maturity. We see that spiritual growth taking place, and that's a good thing. Uh, all these things are the result of the trials and the testing of our faith that we experience in life in general, uh, and because we are believers in Christ. So, so knowing this, we can look at this and say, trials are actually a good thing. Are they enjoyable? No, of course not. Or are they convenient? Never. Are they over quickly? Usually not. But they do serve a purpose. And because of them, we grow. And so uh, we can look at our current situation, my family, and, and whatever uh, you might be going through, whether it's something uh, very personal and close to home, or maybe it's just the situation in our nation. Uh, we can look at these situations, these trials, these various difficulties, uh, and, and trust that, that uh, God is going to bring us through and to trust in God more uh, than we would if our lives had not been interrupted. Um, and, and so it's a great lesson for us to learn, to have that reminder of the purpose in trials. We have to trust God for healing for Ellie and have to trust in him for the, the financial provision uh, to, to pay for all of this expense that we're going to uh, incur and uh, trust in the Lord that we found a good mechanic out here to make these major repairs because uh, we're going to have to leave here and go home and we're not going to be able to come back uh, here. And so uh, we had to do a lot of research and, and hopefully make some good decisions. Um, you know, so uh, when, when life is trial free, we tend to turn uh, away from God and cling to him less than we should. Uh, not that we become uh, apostate, but we just don't uh, seem to exercise the measure of faith that we would when we're in the midst of trials. And so trials cause us uh, to run to him and to call upon him, to cling to him, to rely on him. And because of that, trials are beneficial and we can consider it all joy. Well, the second part is uh, from Philippians 4, chapter 10 through 20. And, and so let me just uh, share this with you with the last few minutes here. 
Uh, Paul says, I rejoice greatly uh, in the Lord. Not, uh, let me start over again. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. And uh, in every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my affliction. You yourselves also know, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving but you alone. For even in Thessalonica you sent a gift more than once for my needs. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. But I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, this is another lesson that I have learned this week, and that is that the Lord provides through his people. There's a lot here in Philippians 4 to unpack, but what I want to focus on primarily is Paul's gratitude for the generosity of his brethren in Philippi. You see, about 10 years before this letter, the church in Philippi had sent a gift to Paul. Uh, they supported Paul uh, before, but they hadn't had the opportunity uh, to do so for quite some time. Uh, it's clear that they wanted to help, but they could not. The desire to help was strong, but their provisions were lacking. And Paul understood this, and he learned to live a content life when that support wasn't coming in and making life a little easier. Uh, whether Paul had much or little, he was content, and he was satisfied with what God had provided for him. And in this case, God had provided before through the generosity of the church in Philippi. Uh, and Paul's contentment uh, is not separate from that. He, he understood that whether he had support or he didn't, whether he had much or he had little, he would be content in every situation. Uh, and, and so, you know, it, it shows us that Paul was not relying solely on the provisions uh, from God through others, that uh, he could be self-sufficient, he could make ends meet. Uh, that whatever he had to do, he would he would be self-sufficient and, and not be a freeloader and not be a leech, uh, you know, just kind of taking and taking and taking, uh, as we all should strive to be, you know, a self-sufficient person. And, and so he had learned how to get along, whether he had much or little. And, and at any given time, he, he learned to be content. And that is a wonderful lesson that we all need to learn. And that's why Paul said he can do all things in Christ who strengthen him. He could continue in ministry, he could press on, he could persevere, uh, even if his situation was of great need uh, until provisions were made. And, and if they weren't made for quite some time, he could still make ends meet. Uh, he understood that he still had great blessings from the Lord. And the reason is because the power of Christ was in him, strengthening him. Uh, we have the Holy Spirit. Every one of us has the Spirit of God within us. And he is that source of power for us. Uh, to endure trials and to consider it joy and to persevere. Without his strength, we simply can't do it. And so thank the Lord that we have his spirit within us. You know, uh, in life, sometimes we experience peace and prosperity, and at other times we find ourselves in turmoil and poverty. Uh, and at all of these times, we need to be content. Uh, it reminds me of uh, a good friend of ours from the church that we used to minister in in Montebello. Uh, her name was Arlene. And uh, every time I would ask her or just greet her in the morning and say, how are you? Her answer was better than I deserve. Now, the first time I asked that, I, I asked her, I said, well, you know, what's going on? You know, why is it better than you deserve? And, um, and she gave me a great reminder that day, and I've never forgot it. Uh, she says, I'm alive. I'm loved by God. I'm saved. Uh, she said, I, I should be in hell right now. Uh, and so I'm very blessed, uh, better than I deserve. And I often think of her during times of trials and, and think of her when I read this passage uh, because she had the right mindset uh, that whatever our situation is, uh, the fact that we are not condemned right now by God in hell paying for our sins, uh, we are better than we deserve. Uh, we deserve nothing from God but judgment, and yet he is so merciful and gracious. He pours out uh, his mercy and grace upon us, and, and we thank him for that, or we should. Uh, again, in our current situation, 
We, we are learning to be content. We are learning to be patient. We're thanking the Lord for what we have, uh, trusting in him to provide what we need. And that's the same that we all need to do as Christians, uh, whether it's the current state that my family is in or maybe a situation of trial that you're in. It could just be the current state of our nation. Uh, again, with all the things that have been happening for months and months now, uh, we need to ask God to help us to be content. Uh, but we also need to look to the body of Christ for provision. And here's where I want to spend our last few minutes. Uh, Paul thanked his brethren in Philippi for their partnership in the ministry. Paul said that they had sent a gift to him more than once. In fact, they were the only congregation who supported him at that time. And Paul never forgot their generosity. Paul considered them partners in ministry. Uh, and as the brethren in Philippi supported Paul in his ministry, they were storing up for themselves rewards in heaven. Their generosity and, and love would not go unnoticed, not by Paul and not by God. Uh, the gifts that they sent to Paul were going to receive a, a spiritual return, that, that heavenly reward. They had sent support uh, to Paul with Epaphroditus, and that support was considered by God to be a fragrant aroma, an offering of love and worship. And so the church showed their love for God by loving Paul and providing for him. And we experienced a bit of that this week. Uh, within a few minutes of our breakdown, I received a message from uh, Richard Vargas, and he was concerned for us, asking how we were and where we were and, and, and were we safe and what was the situation. He said, is there anything that we can do to help? And I, I thought to myself, well, you're in Michigan, what can you do? But uh, interestingly enough, or earlier that week, and I think by no coincidence, Richard and I had a discussion about uh, a brother in Christ, uh, an IFCA member, uh, who lives there in Grand Junction. In fact, he is a director of the Twin Peaks Bible Camp there in Grand Junction. And so Richard said, hey, you want me to give Aaron a call? His name's Aaron Thomas, and see if he can help out in any way. And I said, sure, any help would be great. So long story short, Aaron uh, got a hold of me and uh, directed us to a very honest and reliable mechanic. Uh, he said, you can't be without a car. You guys need to get around, so borrow one of our vehicles. And, and he prayed with me and for our family and the situation. And uh, he kept checking in with me each day, um, multiple times during the day. And, um, you know, it was just a blessing. And he just, he kept saying, I wish we could do more. I wish we could do more. You know, and what he did was amazing. It was a great blessing to us. And in fact, last night we were able to share dinner with Aaron and his wife Karen and just uh, sit back and praise God for all he had done. And um, when he found out that I was going to have to come back to pick up my truck, without hesitation, he just said, I'll pick you up at the airport. Tell me what time you're coming back. And, um, you know, before Wednesday, I didn't know Aaron. Uh, but the unity that we have in Christ is strong. And, and the love he has for God and for Christ was evident in his love for and support for us. Uh, and so every day since we broke down, I have witnessed the body of Christ stepping up and supporting us. Selena at the office handling all the things that, that Pastor Scott and I uh, would normally do and, and even more this week. Uh, Steve Esmond stepping up at a moment's notice and, and leading that Wednesday study and, and Bob Huber um, stepping in and, and taking the, the lead this morning with services. Uh, Pastor Scott in the middle of his vacation, finding a man to preach in my absence. Uh, so again, tune in tonight to listen to Jesse preach. Uh, I know it's going to be a great message. But it's been a great blessing to see God work through his people, providing for us through the body of Christ. And I encourage you uh, to look to your brothers and sisters in the church for prayer and support and provision, and you be a source of that support and prayer and provision as you have opportunity. We're not meant to live our lives as disciples of Christ in isolation and self-reliance. Uh, the body is here to help one another, to support one another, to provide for one another, and uh, in many ways and many times. We're not to demand it, we're not to take advantage of it, but we're not to reject it or overlook it either. Uh, Paul was confident that his brethren in Philippi would have their own needs met, and that's when he wrote, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Listen, we serve a God and a Savior who does not lack anything. His riches and his grace are beyond measure. He'll pour out upon his people exactly what they need and when they need it. Paul was certain of this because he himself experienced it. He assured his brethren that they too would be provided for by God himself. And that's a wonderful reminder and promise that we as the body of Christ can provide for others and that we will have provision for ourselves from God. Our challenges here are not over, but they look to be on track and in good hands. Our situation in our nation is very difficult and very discouraging, and it seems like there's no end in sight. 
But let me assure you that God has a plan that is greater than what we can see at this present time. God will use these situations to strengthen us as individual disciples in the body of Christ. And because of these trials that we're experiencing, I am confident that we are going to see growth, not only in our own lives personally, but as a church. We're gonna be refined, we're gonna be prepared for greater trials, and they probably will come. And so look at this as God you know, priming the pump, uh, preparing us for something even greater in the future. I think we all feel that it's coming, and uh, let's take the opportunity to learn from them and grow, and to encourage each other, support one another, strengthen one another, and as we see God's provision in all of this, we can agree with Paul when he said, now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever, amen. Let me just close in prayer and then I've gotta go pick up our truck and I look forward to seeing you as soon as we can get back. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for this opportunity. I pray that what I shared this morning is helpful, is beneficial, is edifying, and that your will be done in all the situations of our lives. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love for us. And we look forward to seeing what you will do in the days and weeks to come. We thank you and we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. I'll see you as soon as the Lord allows.